hello everyone and welcome back to my channel today i am coming to you to show you how i converted my epson 7210 to print direct to garment so first what you're going to need is your ink you need some heat transfer ink you need some pet film and you also need your heat transfer powder so just like converting your Epson Workforce into a sublimation printer, it's the same exact process. Only thing different is the ink, the paper, and the powder. So with my 7210, I use the same exact ink cartridge that I use, the refillable ink cartridge that I use when I converted my other one into a sublimation printer. And I filled it up with my heat transfer ink. This is what the heat transfer ink looks like. Similar to the sublimation ink, but it is not sublimation ink. It's a special ink that's formulated to print on the pet film. And also, this is the film. So, one side has this like rough feeling, rough feel to it, and the other side has like a smooth feel to it. So the rough side is the side that you're supposed to print on. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate this. Here's my image. I've already reversed it. And then I am using my Epson Workforce 7210 and my settings. I'm going to change the paper size to A4 because it is A4 pet film. And I have my paper type to photo paper matte. Page margin is normal, strength to fit. And that is about it, nothing special. So here's my image and I'm gonna go ahead and load my paper. Another thing, you can print, put your film into your tray as it is and print directly. But I've noticed that sometimes it would print with no problem and sometimes it would get jammed. Well, not actually jammed, it just won't go all the way through. So, um, so what I do now is I tape my film with the print side up to the back of a piece of paper. So I'm using the A-cell paper, but you can tape it to any paper. Doesn't have to be exactly the size of the A4 and load it into your printer. So here's my printer, Epson Workforce 7210. I'm going to load it into the top tray. And I'm going to make sure... cleaning in my printer heads earlier so don't want to do that right now I'm going to change my paper size to A4 and the paper type is on premium matte and I'm gonna go ahead and print.
So now after you have printed, you want to go ahead and remove your film from the paper that you had it taped to. Comes off pretty easy. See, no tape. And then you're going to take it and you're going to oops, drop something. You're going to dip it into the potter. You make sure you fully cover the entire image. Another thing I like to mention is that if you have an image that has a lot of white in it, like this one did, um, the white is not going to print because your printer does not have white ink. So the white is not going to print. But if you're pressing on a white t-shirt, then that will make up for where the white ink is supposed to be, if that makes sense, if I'm explaining that correctly. So you just want to make sure you cover this up really good. And you want to use gloves, wear a mask, and eye protective when you're using this. Make sure it's been fully covered. See, everything hasn't been fully covered. If you see any spots, just go back over it. Then you're going to place this directly under your heat press and let it dry for a few minutes. It doesn't take that long have my heat press at 380 for 40 seconds. So I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and I'm gonna go ahead and prep my t-shirts here. As you can see, this is a kid shirt that I'm just testing. Where is it? 100% cotton. Focus on that. 100% cotton, black, and 100% cotton, white t-shirt. Now I'm only using these two shirts, kid shirts, just for this video purpose. Um, I have not tried it on a black shirt yet, only on white. Uh, with this image that I just printed, I'm gonna do a white one, and then I'm gonna print another image with more color to demonstrate on this black t-shirt because the image I just printed has a lot of white in it. And because the printer does not have white ink, it's not going to print white ink. So you need a white background, which is a white shirt. So now that our image is dry, we're going to go ahead and press it on this white cotton t-shirt here. Let's center that. Sorry, you guys, I'm trying to film this with my phone. And I'm holding it, so. So this is a cold peel. You do not want to peel it while it is hot. It is not going to stick. So I'm going to go ahead and take my t-shirt on over to my table and let it cool down while I prep for the black shirt. Now that this has cooled, I'm going to attempt to peel this with one hand. I see that? I see that? Baby. Bam. DTF done on an Epson printer. Do not spend all your money on a DTF printer. You can do the same thing with your Epson by converting it. I'm going to go ahead and try it on a black t-shirt and see if we get the same type of results. Okay, so I'm going to use this image to test on the black shirt since it's just nothing but color and there's no white in this image just all color so i'm gonna go ahead and print this one 
and change to the Epson 7210. And make my paper size is A4, photo paper mat, and print. Got a little smear smudge of black on here and take off. So now we're going to go ahead and press this one on and hope that it works. Hmm. From the looks of it, don't look like that it that it worked out too good. But we should see, let it cool down for a minute. And the main reason for this is because the Epson white first printer does not have white ink. So there's nowhere for you to put the white ink. And you need the white ink in order to do the color on dark t-shirts. So I kind of knew this wasn't going to work, but it definitely works on white and it does not have to be polyester cotton t-shirts perfectly no weeding no anything just print and press so we're just waiting for this to cool down a little bit so i can go ahead and peel this one off okay so like expected it did not take well to the black but I see I got some powder on it too that I should have dust off beforehand but if you like this style then hey it doesn't look all that bad but Doesn't look all that bad. All the ink, everything, the color comes off of the film. So tell me what you guys think. I know this video is not that great because I just 
Got a little bit excited once I discovered this and wanted to share it with you guys. So I just quickly put this video together. It's a possibility I might go back and remake this video a little better, um, depending on the comments. If you guys need more detail or want me to demonstrate something else, um, then I'll just go ahead and redo this video. But here you guys go again. This is done on the Epson Workforce 7210. I'm sure it can be done on the 7710, the 7720. All the Workforce printers that we normally use to convert to, um, to do sublimation, you can also convert to do direct to film print. All you need is your heat transfer, um, your heat transfer ink and your heat transfer powder and your pet film to print on. And that is it. So again, I'm gonna show you guys the ink. It's similar to the sublimation ink. I used this one already. This is the one I filled my printer with. But it's heat transfer ink. It's a special formulated ink strictly for direct to film printing with pet film paper so let me know you guys thanks for watching bye